thankfully it's a lot cooler now. I left Palm Springs at six o'clock and it was 107 degrees. And it is eight o'clock now, 8 p.m. and it's 82. So that's not bad. So I'm heading out to a place called Elephant Rock, which I think uh, will work quite well for my Milky Way shot later on. The galactic center of the Milky Way rises at about uh, 10 o'clock I think. So I'm hoping to get some uh, some nice shots of the Milky Way, maybe a panorama uh, when it's fairly low in the sky. At this time of year, if you leave it too late, it becomes too too vertical with the horizon and uh, I don't like that as much. I don't think it looks as good. Hey everyone, today I'm coming to you from the most beautiful place or one of the most beautiful places in Southern California, and that is Joshua Tree National Park. So I came up a little bit early. It's about half an hour before sunset, and I'm gonna hopefully get one shot of the um, of the light as it sort of fades here, and then perhaps move to a different location for for some Milky Way shots. But uh, this is uh, just a stunning landscape, and I'm really pleased to be here. Well, I found a composition that I like, and I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but it's between these two rocks here and you can see down through the valley and the light the sunlight shining on the Joshua trees down there and then the one lander rocks are in the distance it's not a very much it's not a, an iconic Joshua tree shot but I really like it the there's two big huge great big rocks here and obviously the Sun is setting behind this um, juniper tree had a bit of a technical issue, one of the legs of my tripod broke. I was actually cleaning it the other day and I guess I didn't put, put it back together properly. But luckily I've got a, uh, a second tripod in the car. So there's my shot. I'm at uh, 1 40th of a second, f14. I'm focusing on the tree right there. And I'm going to take this now before the sun moves uh, any more to the right. I don't want it to get too blown out. And I've got a three-stop soft grad on the front of the camera here, which you can sort of see right there. And I think it'll be a nice shot. We'll see. So I'm in the Elephant Rock area, it's part of Jumbo Rock's campground, so there's quite a few people there. So I'm, I've come kind of close by and I'm looking for a composition that will work. Um, I'm thinking about something like, like this, you've got the, the Joshua tree there, some rocks in the background, and the Milky Way should come up over in this kind of arc here. And now it's just a case of... Uh, Waiting, I think. I might take a little look around, see if I can see something better, but this looks pretty good to me right now, something like that. So I don't know if you can quite see this. I'm trying to hold the camera and show you this app at the same time. It's a night augmented reality app, and you can see where the Milky Way will be at any particular time. And you can move the, try to move this with my thumb here, you can move the, the time back and forward, and you can find out exactly where the Milky Way will be. So for instance at 10 o'clock it's going to be there which is kind of what I like. It's fairly low on the horizon. If I waited until say 
midnight for instance oops midnight is going to be over in that direction and quite a bit more vertical in the sky or perpendicular to the horizon I don't quite like that effect as much but these apps are absolutely fantastic and you can really see what the what the scene would look like um, before you photograph it and make sure that you have exactly what you want and and be ready at the right time so I'm actually getting set up in the car here it's a little easier to just take what I need um, and let's kind of see what I'm doing rather than taking everything out there where it's uh, dusty and sandy so all I'm going to take with me is obviously my my uh, my second replacement tripod <laughs> my uh, my camera obviously and 17 to 40 lens because um, I want to have a, as wide angle as possible for this shot and that's about it and the place I've checked out is not far from the road here but it's absolutely pitch black and I um, have a hard time seeing where I'm going um, without a flashlight so anyway I'll get out there and we'll see what we can uh, see what we can come up with I've got my camera set up on a tripod and I don't know if you can quite see the uh, the Joshua tree there but it is there and it's quite a cool looking one. A couple of things to think about here. Firstly is something called the 500 rule and the way that works is you take your focal length and I'm going to be shooting at 17 millimeters and you divide that into 500 and you'll get the number 30 and what that means is that that's as long as you can have the shutter open without the stars becoming uh, blurry and streaky. Now I found in my experience that 20 seconds, 25 seconds is a little bit better. Uh, we want the stars to be as sharp as possible. 30 seconds starts to push it and the stars get a little bit, a little bit streaky across the sky. Anything longer than 30 seconds then you start to get star trails. So I'm going to be shooting at about uh, 17 millimeters and probably 25, maybe 20 seconds. I'll do a few test shots and see what they come out like. So focusing is really the, I find the, the trickiest part. And first of all, I'm going to put my camera in manual focus. And flip that like that. And then what I'm going to try and do is try and find a star that is in the sky. So I got a live view and I try and find a star that's in the sky. And I think I found one. It's kind of hard for me to, to hold this camera and show you at the same time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera around manually until I find a star that I can I can actually focus on. There's one up there. I think that's actually Jupiter. And I'm going to focus my camera manually on that. So I've zoomed right in on my star. Oops, there we go. And now I'm going to manually focus that until I get that star as sharp as possible. You can see it's blurry there. And as I, oops, as I manually turn the lens to get that as pin sharp as possible, which is about there. And now my camera is focused. So I've got my shot composed um, on the camera and settings are good. The stars are pretty, not pretty much nice and sharp. And the last thing I'm going to do is a, something called light painting, which I don't think you can quite see on, the, on this camera, but I'll go up to the tree a little closer and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And what I do here is as soon as I click the shutter, I paint the tree with some light. Just just a quick like that and that's probably about enough in a 20 second exposure to give the tree a little bit more uh, light and um, it should show up a little bit better on the photograph so literally it's just a that's about it I try and make sure I get the trunk in as well one thing I hadn't factored in was just how much plane activity there is uh, in the sky I guess when you're that close to a big urban area you're always going to get that but I'll just show you a photo I just took just now which if I can, if you can kind of see that and turn this around you can see the uh, 
if they're focus on the uh, camera there, you can see that big streak there as a plane going across. But you can see how I've painted the tree. Uh, but I'm going to compose it slightly differently and um, try that again without see if I can get it without any planes flying across.